to The Unnatural Leader, where we believe that leadership is a skill that can be trained and not an attribute of control. I'm Andy Glenn, and my goal with these videos is to provide you with an easy-to-access resource that will help you develop the tools necessary to be a better leader. In our last video, we discussed self-awareness. We defined what it was, and I provided you with some basic questions that you can be asking yourself to lay the foundational work for self-awareness. Well, after that video, one of our viewers, Mark, contacted us and asked, how do we know over a long period of time if we are actually becoming more self-aware? Wow, what a great question, Mark. Uh, so powerful of a question that I decided that I wanted to, to devote an entire video to trying to answer this. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of research in general about self-awareness and specifically about self-awareness as it applies to leadership and how we measure it over a period of time. Uh, now, don't get discouraged yet. Uh, I think that we can still kind of discuss how we know if we're growing more self-aware over time. And more importantly, what we're going to try and do is to automate our self-awareness so that we don't even need to be thinking about it, but, but that it becomes a more natural thing for us. Uh, and, and in doing so, I think what I first want to start to, by talking about is the idea of goals and habits. Uh, now, here at The Unnatural Leader, we use MT goals. You may be familiar with SMART goals, uh, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based. Uh, well, Mark Horseman and Mike Ozine at Manager Tools took SMART goals and they boiled it down to MT, measurable and time-based. What they found was that the S, the A, and the R were either redundant or were misleading and, and actually uh, counterproductive to, to developing a good, strong goal. So they, we use here MT goals, measurable and time-based, and uh, we'll talk about some of those here in a little bit because what we want to do is we want to create goals with regard to our self-awareness. And we want to create a habit of being self-aware so that it becomes much, much more natural and much more automated. Um, so think, for example, if, if you will, about trying to get in shape. So many of us come New Year's, uh, we're going to set a resolution that says, I want to get in shape. And then we might rush into the gym and, and do nothing, uh, ultimately, because we're going to fail after three weeks. The reason that we fail there in that, that instance is that we haven't developed specific uh, goals uh, that, that, that we can then measure against. Uh, so if we are more accurate in coming up with a goal with regard to physical fitness, we might say, I want to lose 20 pounds over the next year. Well, now that is measurable and it's time-based. So, so we can now create an action plan that will help us to get there. We might say, I want to improve the speed at which I run a mile from 12 minutes to 10 minutes over the next six months. Again, that is now a measurable and time-based goal that we can put resources against to develop and, and actualize. Physical fitness is not a perfect analog, though, for self-awareness because there are so many tools available to us to, uh, to measure physical fitness. Uh, we, can, we can check our weight, we can check our body mass index, our body fat, we can look at how strong we are, how much uh, we bench press, or, or how fast we run. Uh, with regard to self-awareness, it's a little bit more difficult, a little bit more tricky, because again, the research has not figured out how do we measure over a period of time what is self-awareness. Uh, having said that, I think what we want to do with self-awareness is really close two gaps. The first gap that we are looking to close is the gap between how we view ourselves and how others view ourselves. Uh, and then secondly, we want to view or we want to reduce the gap between uh, where we are now and, and how we view ourselves now and then some uh, idealized state that we want to get to. Um, so if we, if we look at it from those perspectives, then I, I think we have the ability to, to measure a little bit better or, or again to, to start working towards improving over the long haul. Uh, now, what I want to talk about is, is kind of turning this into a specific habit uh, or creating a series of habits for self-awareness um, 
that, that we can then use. And in order to do that, I think what we need to do is first we need to come up with anchors. When we anchor a habit, uh, we, when we have a physical reminder of a habit, it's going to be a lot easier to actually perform this habit and, and turn it into a, a you know, a, a routine. Um, and so, uh, for example, you know, you might see people, uh, well, I don't know if anybody does it anymore, but uh, in, in the old days, they would tie a little piece of, of string around their finger because that became an anchor for them to remember to do something, uh, just a small reminder. Uh, what we do have today that we can use for, for reminders, we've got Outlook uh, or whatever email platform you're using where we can set up a reminder on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, a quarterly basis, some basis uh, for some specific action. So that becomes one anchor that we have available to us and it could be uh, on a weekly basis, I need to uh, sit down and, and look at the past week. How did I perform objectively and, and try and, and uh, step back and, and look at that. Uh, so we've, we've created this anchor with an action to, to start forming this habit. Uh, another example that I really love is, uh, and this comes from AJ Jordan Harbinger at The Art of Charm, is the idea of a door check. Uh, and, and this is a physical presence uh, habit that we're going to form to make sure that we are using positive body language and good posture every time we walk into a room or out of a room. So every time we pass the threshold of a doorway, uh, I, I try to think of a string running from the top of my head up uh, and what it does is it causes me to stand a little taller, my shoulders fall back and away a little bit and then uh, you know I put a big smile on my face as I'm walking through doors. And I try and do that every time I walk through a doorway. It helps me create more positive first impressions. And it helps also because uh, there, there's a quite a bit of research on this concept that the mind follows the body and the body follows the mind. And what I mean by that is we can trick our mind into a, a better mood and to being more positive if we have more positive body language. Similarly, if we, if we trick our body in the same way, if we, we think about something, uh, then, then we can create it physically and, and manifest it. Um, the, the, the same idea is what is behind the, the concept of power posing, uh, where we can cre increase our confidence uh, by spending two minutes in some sort of power pose, uh, you know, whether that's hand on the hips, uh, hands behind the head, leaning back, open, open body language really creates a, a significantly more confident mind uh, and, and it's just a, a little hack that we have but by doing that significantly enough we can then transition it into a, a regular habit so that's the door check idea and I, and I think that's a very very powerful one uh, another anchor that I would certainly encourage you to use is a quarterly resume check I think that as leaders we, we want to be keeping our resume updated uh, and to do that Let's do it on a quarterly basis. If we try and remember last year, it's going to get a little bit more difficult. So, so on a quarterly basis, let's sit down, let's update, let's add the accomplishments that we've had over the past quarter at the bottom. But let's also take this as an opportunity to be as objective as possible in looking at where we, we met or failed to meet our job description. And, and by looking at that objectively, we can start to, again, build that routine of continually checking ourself against some objective standard. So that's anchoring. And I think that anchoring is a, a critical part of developing a new habit. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is tools. And I think tools are, are certainly useful in, in automating habits and in automating self-awareness. Um, I think that mindfulness is a, a very powerful tool uh, and again this is more about the physical presence um, of, of our surroundings but by becoming more physically mindful and more present uh, we will ultimately translate that over to improved self-awareness in other arenas. Uh, now specific tools, I use uh, the app on my, on my iPhone, I use Calm, I know a lot of people use Headspace. Uh, I think they are, are very similar in terms of they are both guided mindfulness exercises. Uh, for Calm, I think I spent maybe $30 for a year subscription and that gives me access to all of these uh, guided and unguided meditations or mindfulness exercises. 
uh, that will then you know, help you to think about certain things, whether it's uh, help you become more confident for the day or help you to increase your energy or whether it is uh, a reflection on something that has happened in the past. Uh, regardless, by becoming more using these tools on a regular basis, we will then improve our uh, immediate self-awareness and, and over the long period, we're going to become more self-aware in general. Uh, the third thing that I think is, is important when we are developing new habits is accountability. How do we hold ourselves accountable uh, becomes so important for improved performance and for improved self-awareness that we have somebody or something that is going to hold us accountable. This is where I think the MT goal comes into play. Uh, if, if we set a goal of I'm going to uh, conduct a mindfulness exercise using Calm every day for 10 minutes, um, then we have now a measurable and time-based goal. Uh, and then if we, if we miss that goal, well now we need to look at uh, some sort of accountability of, of how do we hold ourselves accountable if we miss it. Um, maybe we, we don't incentivize ourselves if, if we don't meet that goal. Maybe we say, hey, after a month, if I hit every day doing a mindfulness exercise, 10 minutes a day, I'm going to give myself some sort of goal that is going to then further enhance uh, you know, my self-awareness. Maybe I will then uh, purchase for myself a uh, personality inventory or a communication style in inventory that will then help me also with this general goal of becoming more self-aware, but, but it's a reward for meeting that, that specific goal. Um, additionally, uh, we, can, we can ask somebody else to help hold us accountable. Uh, we, th there's been plenty of studies that show that when we have an accountability partner or an accountability group, that over the long run we will perform better and we will actually meet our goals uh, more likely. That's why companies like Weight Watchers is so popular, is because it's this idea of accountability and helping people hold each other accountable. So look out for somebody, a trusted confidant, or a group of like-minded individuals that you can then bring together as a group and say, let's hold each other accountable, let's meet once a month uh, to, to discuss or once every other week to discuss these things and, and to find a way of holding ourselves accountable over a year, two years, to, to try and improve our, our self-awareness and our leadership. Uh, and then the final thing I think that's important to remember when we are developing habits and when we're trying to automate self-awareness is go slow. Um, we can't do too much at once. If, if we try and throw all of these things in at one time, if we're going to create an accountability group and we're going to use Calm every day and we're going to uh, you know, do all these different things, what we're going to, what's going to happen is we're going to overwhelm ourselves. So pick one, get that going first, and then after that becomes a habit in a month or two, then you can add the next thing that you want to add. So, so start with door checks and then add uh, you know, mindfulness exercises and then you know, just continue to add over time uh, but by, by individualizing each of these and adding them uh, independently of the others, what we're going to have is we're going to have a greater chance of creating a successful habits that over the long run will uh, build up to a, a regime that is going to make us more successful in maintaining our self-awareness and, and in helping us to make sure that we are uh, closing those gaps between where we think we are, where other people think we are, and then where uh, we want to be and where we are. Uh, and that's really kind of the goal with self-awareness is, and it is, is that we can, uh, we can be more accurately uh, defining who we are uh, relative to, to how other people see us and that we can then be improving our leadership in general. Uh, so again, just to kind of reiterate, there's not a lot of research, Mark, on how we know if we're being uh, self-aware over the long run. And, and I think that's actually okay. Uh, I know it might be frustrating, uh, but, but by creating these habits, we're going to force ourselves to become more self-aware. And, and then, you know, if we set them up with MT goals, then we can, we can check, uh, you know, against a, a, a previous version of ourselves. So we can say, hey, look, I, I'm actually doing X, Y, Z uh, that, that is benefiting my self-awareness. I am I'm doing mindfulness meditations uh, three days a week. I am... Uh, you know, meeting with an accountability partner, 
uh, every week versus a year ago when I wasn't doing either of those things. And, and I think that's a really the, the best way that we've got right now for measuring and, and improving our ability to, to be self-aware. Uh, so with that, guys, if, if you found this useful or if you like this video, please do me a huge favor. Hit like, hit subscribe, or, or leave a comment down below. That helps us to reach more people and, and to continue to produce content that's going to be useful. If you didn't find it useful, hey, let us know that down in the comments too. Um, we are, we're, we're still getting started here and we're still trying to figure out exactly what is useful to our audience. Uh, so please let us know. And with that, we'll see you guys soon.